stop what you're doing. I want you to close your eyes for me and take a deep breath in and let it out. What would you do if that was the last breath you ever took? Open your eyes. Do you know where you would wake up? Which eternity you would be in? You know, your heart beats some crazy amount, like 100,000 beats a day. They said it's something like 42 million in a year. Isn't that incredible? What an amazing muscle that is. And what happens if you live 80 years? I mean, how many beats is that? It's crazy. And we take it for granted that this muscle just keeps on going. But one day that muscle might decide to stop. And then where do you end up? The ancient scriptures tells us there's only two choices. There's only heaven or hell. Do you know which one you would end up in? Because once that muscle stops, your eternity begins. There's no second chance. The decision's been made. And I know you might be thinking, well, why is there only two choices? Well, if you've been around for any length of time, then you've, you've basically figured out that the world can be summed up in two words, good versus evil, you know, love versus hate. But where did all this start? You know, where, where, where was the beginning of it all? Well, the Bible actually has all the answers you'll ever need. And I know you might be thinking, the Bible, really, in this day and age? But do you know that the Bible is the number one selling book of all times forever? It's in the Guinness Book of Records, and each year it sells over 10, 10 million copies. It's like the number one selling book on the New York Times bestseller all the time. So trust me, it has all the answers. But when you read the Bible, it describes that God is a loving, kind, gracious, generous, all-knowing, all-powerful God, and He created us. He created the earth. He created everything. And He has a son named Jesus, and He's precious Holy Spirit. We call the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that sounds like there's three gods, but really it's one God and three persons. It's called the Trinity. So it's actually only one God. Let's not get carried away. I know it can be a little sci-fi to understand. You're like, wait, you just lost me. Just, just stick with it, okay? Because if God, if you could wrap your mind around God, then he wouldn't be a very big God, would he? No. You would be God and he would be your creation. So just realize that it's outside of your understanding for the moment, but let's just go with it. So God was before it all. He is outside of time, space, and all of that. And when he created the earth, he started, you know, the Big Bang, Big Bang happened. Here came time, space, matter all into existence at the same time. And he created the earth, the solar system. He created the garden called the Garden of Eden. And he placed in there the very first man and woman, Adam and Eve. And the reason he created Adam and Eve was because he wanted a family. He's got angels in heaven, but he wanted family. He wanted somebody to love, you know, him and have a relationship with him. And so he created Adam and Eve. But, you know, in order for a relationship to happen, you have to have the free will to choose whether you love somebody or not. You know, if a guy or a girl likes you and, and you're not into them, you have, the free will says, hey, no, 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 thank you. But when love really happens is when they love you and you love them back. That's like amazing. So God provided this beautiful garden for them, but he wanted to know, do you really love me? I don't want servants like I have angels. I want a love relationship. So he puts in the garden... Uh, a tree called the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he says, look, don't eat of this tree. You can eat of everything else, but don't touch this tree. You know, it's kind of like telling the kid, don't touch the cookies, right? We always want what we can't have. I don't know why that is. But uh, so Satan comes into the garden as the serpent. Now you're wondering who is Satan? We have to back up the story to heaven. Before uh, Adam and Eve are created in heaven, there was a angel who was created, his name was Lucifer, and he was supposed to be part of the worship team. But he got very prideful and he thought he could be like God. And uh, he was kicked out of heaven. And Michael, uh, Archangel Michael kicked him out with some of these angels. And once you are removed from God's presence, all God's attributes are left with God. So Satan is no longer beautiful or loving or kind or, or, or peaceful. He's horrible. He's Satan. It's, it's anger. It's resentment. It's bitterness. It's strife. It's, it's all that stuff. So he takes on the form of a serpent. He comes in the garden and he comes and he lies to Eve. He says to Eve, hey, did, did God say you can eat of that? You know, if you eat of that, you're going to be just like God. The only weapon the enemy has is deception. It's the same tool he's using today. He comes and he lies in your ear about stuff that's lies. So he lies to Eve and he says, hey, don't you want to just be like God? 
not realizing she was already like God. So she eats the apple, she gives it to her husband. When they sin, what happened is they ushered in the force of sin into the world. Sin came in like a force, like gravity. That's how it came into the world. Now, every single person born after this is born into a world of sin. See, God is pure and holy and nothing can stand in God's presence that isn't pure and holy. So no sin can stand in his presence, which means we would be separated from him. After we died, we could no longer be in heaven because he's pure and holy and we're sinful people. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, Cindy, I don't know. I don't think I've ever really sinned that God wouldn't want me in his presence. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Um, have you ever told a lie, even a white lie? Have you ever uh, stolen anything, maybe a, a dollar bill or a piece of gum? Have you ever looked at somebody lustfully? Like, hey, well, according to the Bible, you're a lying, cheating adulterer. So that means we pretty much all need a savior. We've all sinned. We've all missed the mark, as the Bible says. So we all need a savior. But God loved us so much. He's like, I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to make a way so my children can be back with me and spend in heaven with me. But see, God is a loving. He's a loving God, but he's also a just God. See, sin requires punishment. So who is he going to punish? So he decides to create a plan of redemption and he sends his only son, Jesus, to the earth as a man. So Jesus is still God, but he comes as a man. You know the story we celebrated at Christmas time. I'm not going to go into the detail, but he comes, he lives a perfect life. He then dies an excruciating death on the cross called crucifixion, where he's whipped and beaten. And the scriptures explain why that was important. And he took all of that so we could be healed, so we could be delivered, so we could be saved. And when he hung on the cross, he took all of our sins, your sin and my sin and everybody's sin on the cross. He went to hell. He died. He was dead. He went to hell. He took back the spiritual keys from Satan. He took back the power. And now he gives it back to us. He says, look, you have the choice again to choose. You don't have to live in bondage. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to be chained to that addiction. You can get free of it. And you don't have to spend eternity in hell anymore. You can spend it with God. The only thing we have to do is believe in him and follow him. It's not like any other religion. You don't have to beat yourself up or, 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 or mar yourself or any of that stuff. No, God doesn't need your sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice was enough. He says, all you have to do is believe on him. This is what the scripture says. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Isn't that good news? You take on God's righteousness when you believe in Jesus. The fact that Jesus took our place shows what great love God has for us. It says this in John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Isn't that incredible what God did for us? God didn't do this just so you don't have to go to hell. He did it so you can have a relationship with him starting here and now with Jesus. Look, is your life going to suddenly be perfect? No, but you're going to have the creator of heaven and earth, almighty God, walking this life with you, walking this journey with you. And the way you get this done is it starts with repentance. We're going to pray a prayer. And this prayer, I want you to mean it from your heart and say, God, forgive me. I'm going to walk you through this prayer. This is repenting, going, God, I'm a sinner. I can't do this without you. But the Bible says, when you pray this prayer, all of heaven is watching and the Lamb's book of life has been opened and the angel is about to write your name in that book. So say this prayer with me if you mean it right now. Say, Father God, I come to you today as a sinner and I repent for every wrong thing I've ever done in my life, every thought, I lay it all down at Jesus' feet. I thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross for me. I thank you for paying the penalty for my sin so that today I could be in right standing with God. I thank you, Lord, that today I am your child. I'm no longer an enemy of God, but I am a child of God. And I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Make me new today in Jesus' name. Amen. I know God heard us when we prayed, and I, in my mind's eye, saw that angel writing your name in the Lamb's Book of Life so that the moment that you were to die or cross over in death, guess what would happen? You would wake up in heaven because of this prayer. 
Now, what's next? You don't want to go back to your old way of doing things, your old way of life. And I want to help you on what's next. The most important thing you can do right now is to click the link in the description. I've got a little link. I want you to click it. I've got a free book I'm going to send to your email. And this book is called God's Plan for Your Life. It's very easy reading. It's a short book. You can read one chapter a day. It's going to help you know what you do next. How do I start reading the Bible? Start reading the Bible. Start in the New Testament, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. If you don't have a Bible, you can get the Bible app on your phone. I want you to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be teaching you and helping you on this journey. You can watch our Sunday services. I'm part of the Promise Church in San Diego. We're live every Sunday. You can watch our sermons, but you need to read this book, okay? Don't think you can do this on your own. It's not the way it works. The most important thing that uh, is discipleship is learning what it means to walk with Jesus, okay? So please, the next thing I want you to do is comment in the comments, I prayed it. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, I want you to comment, I prayed it. I want people to see that the, the gospel is getting out, that people's lives are being touched. And then please, I'm being serious, download, get, click the link, download my book, um, God's plan for your life. So you can, I'm going to send it to you for free. There's no charge. I'm just going to email it to you for free so you can start reading it. It's so vitally important. I'm so glad you watched this video today. Please comment. I prayed it if you prayed it and let's give God all the glory for the work he's doing in you and follow me for more.